This is not just any ordinary Game Boy. Although it looks like an ordinary Game Boy, there are some weird marks on the side, and as you can see there is a cable coming out of this Game Boy. Why is that? This particular Game Boy works for all intents and purposes as a Game Boy should, playing Tetris, playing any other games. But the reason why there is a cable is because it actually goes into some kind of shop kiosk display. I'll put a picture on screen and basically this cable would go to the TV screen while the Game Boy itself is actually basically just a controller locked into place. What I would like to do is see the differences between a normal Game Boy and this special kiosk Game Boy. So having a look at the front, these look pretty much identical. Taking a look at the back, there is a Nintendo sticker repair label on it, and apart from that, having a look at the serial number, there is nothing unique on the back, of course other than the cable. So let's start going inside the Game Boy. Taking off the battery cover, there is something I have noticed, and that is that on this Kiosk Game Boy, it is actually used Phillips screws rather than the normal tri-wing. This suggests to me that it was never supposed to come off this display, and no one was ever going to attempt to open it. So. Let's open it ourselves then. Now that all these Phillips screws are removed, let's open it up and take a look. So on the inside, this is where the cable comes up to. It connects to the screen cable, which makes sense because that's where the display is. And I assume it will send the video signal, potentially power to the Chaos itself. So let's compare this to the normal Game Boy. So opening up the normal Game Boy, as you can see, that's what it looks like, nice and clean. Now comparing the screen half boards, and I do see one thing which is a bit odd, I don't know why this would be, but C5 here is fitted on the normal Game Boy, but on this one, it's removed. Not just removed, it's physically cut out. Not only that, but there is some drawing up here that I have no idea what it means, and it is different. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments below, because I generally have no idea. So let's move over to the other half of the Game Boy. So this half, we've already seen a semi-close up, so I don't think there's any other differences. I can't see any other differences. So let's check the other boards that come in the Game Boy. So looking at the power and the headphone jack board, these look identical. Let's take these out so we can get an even closer look by removing all the screws in all the boards, including the headphone board. Now we can remove these from the shell. Now that these are out of the shell, I've kept them in the same place. You have the kiosk one on the right and the normal one on the left. Let's take a closer look. Taking a closer look, there's not too many differences, but there is some differences. I don't know if this is because of the revision of the board, because if we have a look just under this cable, you can see the revision says DMG CPU 04, and on the normal one, it says 06. The other differences I've noticed is the markings on the chips, it looks like they are using different versions. I've then taken a look at literally everything else down to the screws, to the rubbers, to the buttons, and there is no other differences. So mostly this is just a standard Game Boy apart from the cable, a few component changes, a few missing components, and some markings. So let's get to cleaning this up. To start with, I am going to clean this shell, and as I mentioned before, there is a bunch of markings. This was due to it sliding in the kiosk, because it wasn't a perfect fit. So let's clean this up. You can tell it's definitely been well used. I'm just going to use an antiseptic wipe to do this, and give it a nice once over. And then to dry it, I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth and then just leave it to sit. I'm then going to use some IPA and a cotton bud to clean the speaker because this is pretty filthy. Yeah, looking at that, that was disgusting. I'm also going to use some IPA for the volume wheel to ensure that it's making good contact and to keep working. And finally, with this board, I'm just going to give all the button contacts a once over with IPA. It 
Strangely, on the cable itself, there's actually some kind of weird marking like it's been worn. I'm not sure what that is, so I'm also going to clean this off with IPA. Moving on to the second half, the slightly trickier half because of this cable. I can't fully remove it, it would be a massive pain to do so. So let's clean the shell with an antiseptic wipe. And then to also dry it with a microfiber cloth. Moving on to the main board itself, I'm going to touch up the contrast wheel with some IPA to ensure there is good contact. While I'm here, I'm going to use a little bit of IPA to clean the DC jack. And lastly, I'm going to clean the power switch with also, you could never guess, some IPA. Now that the board is cleaned, we can move on to the final part and clean up the battery cover. And also drying with a microfiber cloth. Now that all these bits are cleaned, we can bring on the montage and start reassembling. Before we get too far into the montage, I've actually forgot to clean the buttons and the rubbers. As you can see, it's definitely been well used, and some of this I don't think is even rubbish, I think it is just generally plastic rubbing. So let's clean these all now quickly for you, and let's carry on with the assembly montage. There we have it, it is all completely cleaned up and reassembled and still fully working. As you can see I can't get rid of all the marks because it's actually been scratches and it's very deep on there but I have cleaned up near enough all of them and I'm very happy how this has turned out. Maybe one day I can actually get the shop kiosk and plug this Game Boy in and have it set up as it should. But today is not that day. <laughs>